Sarah, Howard Kissel also said, there is more genuine drama in each of the songs and closer than ever than in the entirety of most of the bloated spectacles that now pass for Broadway musicals. That's pretty crazy. Uh, it's probably the best musical we'll see this season. The backlash of critics against the big musical was underway. In fact, Closer Than Ever, which played at the Cherry Lane, had a program note bragging about its lack of amplification. So in the Times, Stephen Holden said, any show whose characters are this interestingly alive feels like home. About writing Closer Than Ever, Malpy said, I find that people are more interesting in real life than when they're stage characters. I would like to see songs that are at least as complex as my friends. Uh, and in an interview with Malpy and Shire at the time mentioned that while they were both working separately on larger projects, Closer Than Ever is one of the closest to both of their hearts. Closer Than Ever ran for over 300 performances, and audience members treasured its true-to-life portraits of modern men and women. One highlight of the show was a song called Life Story, sung by Lynn Winterstellar. Oh, yeah, exactly. Uh, backstage said, Winterstellar rightfully stops the show with her definitive heartbreaking life story, a flawlessly constructed, bittersweet, one-act play of a song. Here to speak about, closer than ever, and sing life story, Miss Lynn Winterstellar. <laughs> stories of Closer Than Ever. The first one is that I turned it down, not once, not twice, but three times. <laughs> I was doing a very lofty off-Broadway show, required a lot of my singing at the time, and I didn't think I could handle it. That show was nonsense. <laughs> True story. You know nonsense, right? Yeah. Sister Amnesia. Absolutely. I had to sing with a puppet as an opera singer. <laughs> And I had to tap dance in the whole thing. And then at the closing of the show, I also had to become a country western singer with a big, hot, brassy belt. So Stephen Scott Smith uh, was given the key to the trunk songs of Maltby Shire. Now I had done many, many productions of Baby and saw Baby, and I was a huge Maltby Shire fan anyway. But I, when he, the phone call came, I just couldn't possibly, I'm doing Sister Amnesia right now. Thank you so much. <laughs> a week goes by. He calls back. Lynn, we really would like you to just come in and say, I'm sorry, Sister Amnesia. And I, I'm very loyal to a show once I'm in it, and I really have to watch my pipes. Patrick Brady called two days after that and said, I want you to come over to my apartment, and I just want to play some of this music for you if you wouldn't mind. Sure. So I go over to his apartment. And I listen to Bear Tiger, I listen to all these things, and then all of a sudden he hands me life story. And I said, there's was a little voice in the back of my head that says, you've got to give up, you've got to give the content up. <laughs> this is going to be something very, very special. But in the meantime, we did rehearse while I did nonsense. So late at night I would go down and drop my, my nun's habit and run down to the village at a drag bar called um, 88s, which is no longer in existence, and we would do a little musical called Next Time Now at the time. It was Brent Barrett, myself, and Michael Bryan, and Patrick Brady playing. And we were packed, word spread like wildfire about Wolfie Shire's music, and of course, the rest is history. So, um, that was my introduction to Closer Than Ever. I turned it down three times, so if something's supposed to be yours, it will be yours. It will come back around to you. The other stories, I have to set the record straight. Seth Rudetsky has this on his blog, and it's so wrong because Brent Baird is such a gentleman. It is the wrong story. It is Richard Newens who did this, and I need to tell this real quick story. This has nothing to do with life story, but it is my love story. <laughs> Richard Newens is one of the funniest, driest, nastiest human beings ever to work with because he just, he'll make you crack up on stage and look at you and turn to the audience as if it's your, your fault. So <laughs> he knew, the whole cast knew, that once Bear Tiger was done, I could relax in this show. Bear Tiger is a list song of animals. I mean, animals. It is a brilliant song. One of Richard Mulpey's most brilliant lyrics ever. And I stressed about it every show, from the beginning of Next Time Now to when we closed it two years ago at Bristol Riverside Theater in Pennsylvania. I stress about that. And it is the beginning, if you know, the sh uh, it, it was 
bum 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 da 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 and I would rock in and go, stop! All right, that's it, and start the list song, right? I'm standing there waiting in the Cherry Lane one day. Richard, I didn't see Richard Mullins, but he happened to be there in the shadows, and I'm waiting, concentrating, and, and the cast knew not to mess with me, because that was my real scary song. I'm standing there, bum 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 da 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 bum bum and all of a sudden, Richard Mewins comes out with his water bottle and goes, right here. <laughs> I had a cranberry shirt on. Seriously, I was lactating. I walked on stage, and of course I'm petrified because of what animal's gonna come out of my mouth next. I'm concentrating on it, and the whole audience is going, <laughs> and they're trying to figure it out. They're sort of going, is she lactating? Because they were perfectly round. I could never get Richard Newman's back. I could never get him back, but that was... Anyway. I just want to say, um, Richard Mulpey and David Shire are dear friends, and they are true geniuses. And they write about the simplest things. And it is such a gift an opportunity for an actress. It's like eating filet mignon. It is just, you sink your teeth into their material. And they can take the simplest thing, like a dinner party conversation, which is what this woman was, and she talked about her life. And little did she know that Richard, Richard Mulvey was going home to write her life down. And it turned into this song, and it's truly been a gift for me, and I hope a gift for you. Do I need a stool? Do I want a stool? Oh, I am. Yeah, all right. Okay. It's a stool song. <laughs> okay. Can you hear me? Hope I can do this right. All right. Go ahead, Caleb. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
window as I watch Jersey growing dim. I feel a troubling emotion summed up in this notion. I wish I'd stayed with him. Lord knows each day with him was madness. I have spent my life maintaining, but more and more I recall the joy, my golden dreamer, my lost boy. Our life was life in the twilight zone, but no worse than